In the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever into the future all ages. Amen. Today is the third Sunday of the blessed month of Abib, and as we said uh, before, this month focuses on the apostles, and their, um, we start with the commission of the apostles, and then we continue with the virtue that we see, especially humility and faithfulness. And today we see the importance of the blessing of the apostle and also the teaching of the apostles that come um, from their mouths. <clears throat> so today we'll actually, because this gospel is very familiar to us, and we, we read and probably contemplate it on it very often. Um, as you know, we, when half of the year, when um, the, there's a fifth Sunday in the month, we read from the blessing, um, either from this gospel or the gospel according to St. Matthew. Um, and we also pray it every uh, day in the ninth hour. <clears throat> um, but we'll focus a little bit more today on... Uh, the other theme relating to blessing, which has to do with what comes not into the mouth, but what comes out of the mouth. As the Lord said in the gospel, uh, not what comes out of the mouth defiles a man, but what, sorry, what comes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth. Um, <clears throat> and so today in the Catholic epistle, St. James speaks to us about uh, the tongue. I'll just read um, a portion of it. I'm sure you're very familiar with it already, um, but it's uh, from St. James uh, Epistle, chapter 3. He says, uh, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. <clears throat> um, and then he continues talking about the different examples of uh, of the tongue. Anyone remember any of them? Okay, we'll read it then. It says, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouth, mouths, the bridle, that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. So that's the first example, the, the bit that is placed in the mouth, and it turns the entire body of the horse, right? The second one, he says, Look also at ships. Although they are large and driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder that turns the entire ship, right? Um, <clears throat> wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great fo forest a little fire kindles. That's the next example. Um, one little spark can destroy an entire forest. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by hell. And he continues. This is with it. Um, we'll, we'll get to it in a minute. So many people, when they read this, they say, okay, I'm free from this. I've overcome the temptation of saying bad words. This does not apply to me. Um, but actually, there's many different kinds and types of sins of the tongue. Um, and I'll just mention a few, but I think just to remind us that it, it's, it's very difficult to flee ourselves from this temptation. <clears throat> so he says, um, like even when the Lord says, if, if you call your, your brother fool, you're in danger of hellfire, right? Um, and, but not only is it filthy language or speaking about filthy things, but gossiping or rumors or disclosing secrets of others, um, lying, of course, um, but that also includes exaggerating when, when you're speaking, um, telling a half truth or misleading someone intentionally. Um, it also includes saying good things, flattering someone when you don't mean it, or praising someone uh, for one reason or another, um, or, or being a hypocrite, saying one thing in, in front of them and speaking falsely or saying the opposite behind their backs. So um, there's much more, which includes uh, slander, reviling, insulting others, condemning, complaining, murmuring, um, grumbling, um, sins due to pride, boasting, right? justifying yourself, um, interrupting others, heresy, blasphemy, uh, spreading doubts, even in your teaching, whether intentionally or unintentionally. So um, there's a lot of things. Even the Lord says, not just these negative words, but idle talk. Just, um, he says, every idle word men speak, 
um, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Um, says, and then he says, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. <clears throat> so I hope the, the, the point is, is clear that we all have something to work on um, when it comes to the tongue. Um, and it's not just the words that come out that are the serious problem. But in, uh, according to scripture, um, the, the, what comes out of the mouth is just a reflection of what's on the inside, right? Whether in our mind or our heart. As, um, as the Lord says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if your words are bad, then that means there's something bad or filthy inside of your heart. And that's the greater danger. Um, <clears throat> some people might have evil things in their hearts, but they speak good things. That's, all, that's also a problem. But usually what comes out of the mouth is a reflection of what's inside. Um, and that's, that's what we need to correct um, before we meet our creator. Right? <clears throat> and um, some people say, well, I could be a good person and I don't have to change what I say. No, that, that's not how God defines what is good. Right? Um, as uh, St. Paul in the book of Colossians, he talks about the new life. He talks about the, the Christian who has been baptized and transformed. And he says, now you're to put off all of these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man. So the whole idea is, well, yes, I am a new creation in Christ, but there, may, there might be a lot of old things that I have not left in, in my new life with Christ. <clears throat> so... Um, St. James also, in the same epistle, in the, the first chapter, he says, If anyone among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. So th that's a great um, uh, rebuke to, I think, all of us. So um, we have to make sure that we don't have this duplicity or this hypocrisy as, as being called Christians, but not necessarily living the life and, and speaking the good words of Christ all the time. <clears throat> and, and this is what St. James talks about when he says, you can't have good and bad water out of the same opening, right? Um, he says, with, with our mouth, we bless God our Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Um, and he said, these things ought not to be so. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> he also used the example of the tree. One, the tree gives one kind of fruit. Um, it says a fig tree can't bear olives or, 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 or a grapevine can't bear figs. Okay, <clears throat> so um, we shouldn't get used to this. So the, the more positive part of this is, well, how do we fix the problem? Um, and this has a lot of steps, but I think to clarify, it might be easier to look at the system um, spiritually speaking, in, in our bodies, right? Like, medically speaking, we have many different kinds of systems, right? We have the um, circulatory system, the digestive system, the respiratory system, all of, all of those things. But spiritually, we say there's another system, uh, which I'm going to invent, we call the logo system, right? Um, <clears throat> and um, it starts by whatever we see and we hear and, and the senses, right? So we take in things, Right through our senses, and then it goes into the mind, and then deeper it goes into the heart, and then after that, whatever comes out of our mouths is that's 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 the end of the system, right? So that's why the Lord says um, the problem is not necessarily with the mouth; it's just a reflection of what's inside, um, <clears throat> and so um, just like if if you have let's say, um, uh, water coming out from, from um, let's say, the faucet at your home, um, and you want it to be clean, right? There's different places where you clean it, right? So just like we said, the different stations, the eyes and the ears, and then the mind, and then the heart, and then the mouth, those are all different places where we should or we can filter um, the we can say the water, <laughs> for, for lack of uh, a, a better um, example. So, so going to our ears and our eyes and our senses, what am I listening to? What am I watching? What am I, who am I um, around 
that might be influencing me in the negative, right? Um, uh, if you study um, computer science, right, there is a, a term called um, garbage in, garbage out. You can't expect to put in bad information and expect good information to come out, right? The same thing with ourselves. We can't expect to watch filth and to and and to be a good to have a good heart. Um, it, it doesn't work, right? So we have to clean and to filter what we're taking in, what we're reading, what we're watching, um, because that changes our thoughts and it changes our heart um, for the good or for the bad. So for the good, that means we have to watch and read and, and see good things and hear good things, and that will cleanse the heart, <clears throat> um, especially with scripture, right? The, the second station is the mind. Um, and uh, we have, as St. Paul says, we have to set our minds on things above, not on the things of the earth. And, and so let's say you, listen, you, you hear something um, unintentionally, which is bad. You let it be in one ear and out the other. As much as you can, you don't let it dwell in your mind or in your heart. Um, but the good things, we have to dwell on them. We have to contemplate on them. Like St. Paul says to the Philippians, whatever the things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there isn't any virtue or if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on those things. So the more we get our mind exercised on the good, then our minds and our hearts and our mouths will be pure. Um, but if we're focusing all of our attention on the things of the world, then there's less of a chance for for our, our hearts to be pure. Um, and so um, that's the second um, station, right, which is the mind. The third station is the heart. And this is um, the most important but the most difficult to focus on. Um, of course, we, we focus on repentance and purifying our heart with God's grace. <clears throat> um, but... Um, the idea here is that when we live the spiritual life and the sacramental life and the life attached to Christ, he is the one who, who cleanses our heart. Um, and when we're reading scripture and contemplating on scripture and on the things that are good and the creation of God, then that sanctifies our mind, but also eventually it sanctifies our heart. Um, and so when God sees this intention by us to do good, then he is the one who will purify us and cleanse us and transform our hearts. <clears throat> um, and the last thing is, is the mouth. The last, like we said, the last part of the system where everything comes out is the mouth. And it might be the easiest out of all of the, the steps that we said before to, to bridle and to control. Um, but uh, we give some encouragement um, through the readings, the writings of the fathers, like for example, St. John Chrysostom, it gives the explanation. He says, um, God has surrounded the tongue with a double wall, with the barrier of the teeth first, and the fence of the lips second. So we have two gates. Um, and some people say, these are the, also the gates that we have to, before we speak something, have to ask ourselves, is it good? Is it necessary? Is it true? Is it edifying or kind or, or out of love before we speak it? Um, because you can't take it back. Whatever you say, even if you apologize a hundred times, you can't take back what you said. Um, <clears throat> uh, just look on uh, social media or in the news of all the people who are um, famous and saying whatever they want to say, and then people get offended and upset, and they have to walk back their words and apologize or delete the message. Of course, the damage has already been done. Um, but some, so many times people... Um, in their pride or their or their haste, um, will say things that they regret later. Um, so Saint John Chrysostom says, <clears throat> he says, uh, suppose it doesn't stand for this treatment, the, the tongue, and wants to keep talking and talking. He says, um, punish it with the teeth, um, just as you were giving it its body over to the public execution or to be bitten. So he says, bite your tongue. You know, that phrase that we, I don't 
necessarily recommend that we do it very hard, um, but at least this is the reminder of, of stopping ourselves. It says, for where it is better that it be bitten now when it sins than thereafter when it's parched and seeking a drop of water and it be deprived of that consolation. How true is the verse in the Proverbs, death and life are in the power of the tongue. <clears throat> um, so the idea here is to, as the book of Strach says, make a door and bolt your mouth as you lock up silver and gold, make balances and scales for your words. Um, so before you send that email, before you say that response to defend yourself, before you send that, take an extra second or, or minute um, to think through it before you speak. Just a second or even a millisecond of a pause might be the difference between saying something bad and not saying something at all. <clears throat> um, so um, we have to learn from, from our speaks in, in this way. And in addition, it's not just saying bad, but maybe the multitude of words might need to be discreet, decreased in, in, in most of us. Um, so like the proverb says, in the multitudes of words, sin is not lacking. So the more I speak, the more in danger I am of saying something wrong. Um, <clears throat> but he who restrains his lips is what, as the proverb says. Um, so we have to guard the, the tip of the tongue, as St. John Chrysostom says, for it's like a stallion. If you put a bit in its mouth, like St. James says, and teach it to walk in order, it adapts to this and is satisfied. So it's hard at the beginning, just like you're trying to tame an animal. It's difficult, but after a while, um, it knows what is proper and what is right. Um, so, it, but, but if you let it run wild, like St. John Chrysostom says, it becomes the vehicle of the devil and his angels. Um, so, so we need to bridle ourselves, um, and we start maybe um, with, the t with the tongue. <clears throat> um, so there's a lot of other things that we can talk about, right? Um, like, for example, when we control ourselves with fasting, what comes in the mouth, it helps control also what comes out. When, when we increase the amount of prayer and praise in our life by speaking good things of the Lord, uh, it it reminds us when we begin to say something bad that, okay, we, we are being duplicitous here and we're um, returning to, to the danger of what St. James warns us about. Um, but ultimately, like I said, um, we need to pray about it. We need to place this in, in the hands of God. As the psalm says, set a guard, O Lord, over my lips, over my mouth, and keep watch over my lips. So we know God is the one who gives us this grace, so we have to pray for it. Um, <clears throat> as St. Augustine says, a man is needed in order to tame a horse. And in the same way, God is needed in order to tame a man, uh, to tame us. Right? If James, St. James had wanted to say that, he would have done so, but instead he was determined to show what a great evil a man's tongue can be, so great that it can't be tamed by anyone, even though that is not true of wild beasts. Um, but he's, but then he, hopefully, with hope, he says, he said not, he said this not in order that we should tolerate the evil, but in order that we should ask for divine grace to tame our tongue. <clears throat> it, it is God as the one who makes us pure. But when He sees our struggle, then He blesses. <clears throat> um, and the pot on the flip side of it is that um, yes, we'll be con condemned by by our words, but. God said before this, he said, by your words, you'll be justified. So all the good that we say and all the good that we try to do, God sees and knows. As long as we're not doing it with a hypocritical heart and we're, we're struggling to do, to do good and to say good, and uh, then that will be the justification that God gives us by his grace. May, may the Lord of all grace give us not only the pure words, but the pure heart and the pure mind. Glory be to him now and come to the age of